Hello everyone, I'm the Viking General and this video will be about province specialties. As you can see and probably already guessed from the title and thumbnail, this will be a tier list video. So I will be ranking all the different province specialties on this list. The economy guide will be coming up, but I thought it would be fun to give a little preview on my opinion about the province specialties. Now, before I begin, let me explain the rankings. S tier means that I consider it a key province specialty, almost essential to any campaign. A tier means that I consider the specialty to always have a good effect on your campaign. B tier means that I consider that the specialty is only a good effect in some cases. C tier means that I consider the specialty to always be useful, but will generally not be a target province to acquire. D tier means that I consider the specialty to only be useful in some cases. But before we start ranking, I'd like to remind you to subscribe if you haven't. This will keep you up to date with all that is happening and it will help me growing the community. And if you have the time, why not do some algorithm pleasing things such as liking, disliking or commenting on the video. Thank you. Alright, let's start with the smithing specialty. The smithing specialty will go into A tier. Uh, I feel that it is a useful, very useful building and it was always has a good, a good effect on, on your campaign because having better troops than the enemy is always worth it. However, I don't think it is it warrants an S ranking because I don't think it is really that key to any successful campaign. It will certainly be very useful and very helpful, but it won't really give you that edge, the edge you really want to get into in a campaign. If you don't have those troops with those upgrades, you'll still generally be able to win the battles, just not as efficiently. Next, we'll have Craftworks. I put Craftworks in the same tier as the Smithing a smithing specialty i think i will actually even want to put i'm not sure if i can yeah i can change it around i would put it even higher than the smithing uh specialty building i generally like to play with more melee troops so it might seem that it's weird because the smithing will give the bonus to the melee troops and the craft works will give the bonus to the archeries to, to the archers or missile troops but the book the, the book that this craft work actually gives to your archers is insane at the highest level it is a plus 20 bonus to accuracy which will make uh even basic basic bow ashigaru equivalent to bow samurai uh and only half the price so really good building in that in that regard very cost effective uh for for low tier units and if you put if you have your bow warrior monks with the uh, plus 20 uh, accuracy they're basically just turned into snipers on top of that it will also increase the wealth a bit of your pro of your province and it will also give a little bit of uh, trading goods and they will give you the craftworks trading good which is actually quite valuable i just always build up the accuracy bonus but if you want to you could also use this building to actually make some money but i would recommend to always keep it at the accuracy bonus because that is so much more powerful uh, for the same reason as the smithing it is not a i think it's not s tier because it will not really change your campaign in any shape or form it will really help you with all the things you're doing so next we have the gold specialty and uh it might seem weird but i think i'll put it as an s tier uh i think it's really key to actually finance your campaign one of the most limiting factors is generally not how good your armies are but how much, how much you can afford to pay your armies. The gold specialty really is one of the few buildings that has a great return on investment. This specialty building can really kickstart your economy. So next up is iron. I'll put iron into C tier. Um, and the reason that I give it C tier is because iron itself, iron itself is very useful to have to upgrade your sword building. And while you can't import it from other clans, it only has two provinces on the map that actually have iron resource. So I think it's useful to have the province in your own control. On top of that, it also provides a decent chunk of wealth and it also provides the iron resource trade goods to trade with, which is actually quite valuable as well. And it also, on top of that, it also reduces recruitment costs, although that is a effect that is basically negligible because you don't want to recruit units there because generally you will have other provinces that make better units so next we will have the naval tradition and for me naval tradition will go into d tier and that makes i think that makes a lot of sense because navy isn't that useful in this game it it, it, it can be very useful to defend against naval invasions uh, but a navy can be a huge 
money sink if you invest too, into it too much. There are only a couple of clans, for example, the mostly the, Otom uh, the Otomo and the Shimazu clan, which can make really uh, good use out of this, uh, because they generally do want to invest heavily in their navy because they're near trade nodes. So the naval tradition is some... That's why I always think uh, specialty builders have some use, and in this case, it's only sometimes useful if you're playing those clans. All right, we will now go to the ninja. I would put the ninja... I have been doubting between S tier or A tier, but I think eventually... I settle down on A tier because it'll either increase the experience of your Kisha Ninja recruits, which is not useful. But the other chain, that is the one we are most interested in. That building will provide us with higher recruitment for ninjas in that province, which is useful because ninjas will die all the time. And then getting your ninjas up and uh, up and running faster is always good. And it also provides wealth, which is also useful for increasing your economy. And with all that being said, you would say it's S tier because really your ninjas are very important agents in, in the campaign and having them making them better is basically essential, especially on higher difficulties where you have to deal with a lot of enemy agents. But the thing is why I can't get this in S rank is because the locations there and not every clan will have access to it until maybe very late into the game. That nudged me over the edge to put that in A tier instead of S tier. But speaking of S tier, we can see philosophical tradition is coming up. And I think almost everybody will agree with me here. That definitely belongs there. That is one of the best. That is not one of the best. That is the best. Let me switch it around. Uh, let's also switch this around. This is the best specialty building in the game. Hands down. It will give you a recruit rank to Matsuke's. And Matsuke's are basically your bread and butter. As, same with the gold mine. It's just your economy is so important. It's, it's the foundation of your entire campaign. On top of that, you also get a bonus to your art mastery rate. This is also where I am always a little bit on the fence on what I really want to do with it. Because generally I will have a single province with philosophical tradition. The first one I acquire is generally going to be the focusing on upgrading the Matsuke's. But the second one I require, I generally go for the increased arts mastery rate because in the later stage of the game, your arts take much longer. So I generally use only a single one to recruit my Matsuke's and then use the rest for increasing my arts mastery, which is also very useful because even on the later stage of the campaign, there are some arts in there which are quite valuable. Although now we have to get our head out of the clouds and actually start looking at the next specialty, which is the Prime Forest. Sadly, we will go from S tier straight to D tier. And I think it is actually, I value this the lowest in of all the province specialties. Uh, this is because wood is almost worth nothing in terms of the trade it only gives a little bit of wealth to the province and it only reduces the cost of recruiting ships and well like i said navy isn't that important if you want to use the navy you will use the naval tradition one furthermore you do need access to wood to make the dry dock building but the dry dock is again a naval building which again isn't that useful all right three to go we will now be talking about hallowed ground and this will be B tier, but it is high B tier because it does increase the uh, rank of your monk units. But for me personally, I don't value monks as much as I value the Matsuke and the ninjas. And I know a lot of people are loving their monks and will probably be a little bit mad at me for not putting this building up higher. But for me personally, I don't value monks that much. So it's for me, it sometimes has a good effect if I want to focus on monks. And for example, uh, two clans, uh, mostly the Eko Iki and the Yurosui clans, will make a lot more use out of these buildings. Uh, for one, because better monks is useful for those clans. And secondly, uh, these buildings will also can also uh, give boost to uh, their warrior monks. However, I would still recruit warrior monks at the blacksmith or the fletcher uh, because those are base increases instead of experience increases and experience they will definitely get on their own because they, especially for the Eko Eki and the Uesugi, they are killing machines. So they will 
rack up a lot of, lot of kills very fast and they will increase in rank that way. So the increased experience is basically not worth at all, not worth at all. And the other option with the increased level of monks, which I would recommend even for Ikki Ikki and Yuasuge, just go for the better monks one. Uh, it does give five morale to all units. And morale is a very useful stat. It is very important. However, again, generally you will have a lot of other ways to boost morale in your army. Generally, you will have your general, which is good as a job. You'll, on top of that, you will have an art mastery bonus and your troops will rank up and which will also give uh, morale. So this is only generally useful in the early stage of the game. <clears throat> and next up, we will have the stone building, which is for me a C tier province specialty. It does give a tiny bit of wealth even less than the forest and it gives a little bit of uh, stone to trade however stone is generally very cheap so it's not worth that much but the good thing about the stone building is that it reduces the cost of construction in, in the province which is useful it, it always saves a little bit of money that way uh, however you generally don't want to develop provinces with stone in it mostly because you want to develop other provinces with the better specialties you want to develop those so the 10 percent reduced cost of building construction isn't that good but it's it's useful it's always there but it isn't good it isn't good enough uh furthermore stone is required to upgrade your forts to castles and, and eventually citadels and it's also used to make imperial roads all right finally we will get to the horses horses specialty and at first i wanted to put them in b tier but after trying to explain why I put them would why I would put them in B tier, I ended up convincing myself that they actually should be in A tier. And you might see a pattern here, all the stat boosting specialties are on in the same tier. However, the horses aren't there only for their stat boosting. Actually, because of their stat boost being not that important, uh, charge bonus for cavalry, which already has a high uh, charge bonus to begin with, not really that useful so that's why they they are they would have been uh, in the beats here because they are sometimes good to like for certain clans however the most important thing for me for the horse specialty building is that it gives you access to the warhorse resource and for me the warhorse resource is essential to winning campaign because it will allow you to recruit or to build the warhorse stables and it will allow you to recruit the yari cavalry which is basically one of the best units in the game and yes you can trade for war horses but especially in realm divide chances are you're not going to be able to trade with a lot of plans so you really want to make sure you have acquired it before you start the realm divide that is why i would put it into a tier just because you get access to the, basically the best resource in the entire game also a good bonus for having access to war horses is other clans which do not have access to war horses are generally willing to pay a lot of money to acquire those war horses. I've made deals with up to 40,000 Koku simply because they really desperately wanted those war horses. Anyway, this is my final ranking. Let me know in the comments if you either agree or disagree. I'm really interested to read what you guys actually think about this small tier list. And as a side note, you might see down here that I do have a Twitter now. Not because I wanted to have a Twitter account, but you basically need a Twitter account to use this site, so I had to make a Twitter account. But, well, basically now I have it. Uh, if you want to, you can follow me there. I will probably not use it too often, because I will forget I even have it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.